So why is the 15 inch MacBook Air so easy and so hard to recommend? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So if you have not been under a rock lately, you know that the brand new 15 inch MacBook Air came out. Now what I wanna do in this video is, there's a reason why I would recommend this and there's a reason why I would definitely not. And that's kind of what I wanted to cover. So I've made a couple videos in the past on this, but really what I wanted to do is kind of clarify that and then give you my opinion, all right? Now my opinion is just my opinion, it's not fact obviously, so you can definitely challenge me on the facts, but my opinion is my opinion, all right? And uh, this is just the way I feel. So I just wanna help people that are thinking about buying the 15 inch MacBook Air. And uh, from my standpoint, I think there's a really good reason why you'd wanna pick it up. And there's a couple of reasons why you may not wanna pick it up. And that's what I'm gonna go through. So stay through and through the whole video because at the end there's gonna be some twists and other things like that. You may wanna find out if you're thinking about buying this thing. So without further ado, we're gonna get into it. The 15 inch MacBook Air. It's both easy and really difficult to recommend. All right, so the reason you might wanna pick this up, the 15 inch MacBook Air, and this is the kind of person I would recommend doing it, all right? The person that is not doing four and 8K edits every week, the person that just uses this for email, you know, basic work stuff like Word documents, things like that, multiple tabs open, maybe 15 or 20 tabs at once. That kind of a user is perfect for this, and that's perfect for the base model. So if you're thinking about, if you're that person out there and you're not doing like crazy editing or anything like that, Xcode or anything, you definitely wanna think about the base model. You can get it for $12.49 right now. So what does it come with? Number one, let's just go through some of the positives and why you'd wanna pick this up for $12.49. The price, obviously. Great price, incredible value for what you're getting. Compared to Windows laptops, you're always gonna get you know, some other ones, people out there saying it's worse, what have you. But it's gonna be, you know, it's hard pressed to say that it's, it's worse than most of the other ones out there. So it's actually a really good value for the money. All right, form factor is the big one here. So form factor means it's very thin, light, easy to travel with. It's an incredible form factor. The build quality is perfect. And a lot of people, when they hold it, they think it's a lot lighter, basically, than it appears. I mean, it's really only a couple inch, you know, a couple ounces lighter than the 14 inch, but it feels a lot lighter just because of that nice form factor. It's just Apple did something right with the form factor on this one. All right, the screen. I mean, if you're thinking of the 13 inch or the 15 inch, this seems to be the sweet spot if you wanna just put it in your lap and get work done. If you're aging and you got <laughs> worse vision, it's good. Or if you just wanna have more real estate on the screen, the 15 inches is perfect. So again, stay with me here. We're gonna get into other stuff in a couple minutes here, but that's one of the reasons you wanna pick this up also is the screen. All right, the next one is the speakers, all right? So the speakers are incredible on this thing. Now, they're not as good as some other Apple computers out there, but they're very good. So if you're a user that likes just to listen to music around the house and stuff, not through headphones sometimes, the speakers are great. And that's really, you know, it's something that you can say, like it's, it's maybe not as good as some of the other ones, but it's probably better than any Windows laptop out there. All right, another big one is it's fanless, all right? And I've talked about the one over here multiple times where Without a fan, it's just enjoyable. You're not hearing that thing fire up if you're like watching a movie and just doing something on the computer. Now, there's some disadvantages to it, but if you like a fanless system, that's definitely one of the best things you can do out there is pick one of these things up. All right, now another advantage also is it's got more cores, right? So for the same, basically, without having to upgrade, you get more cores than you do on the 13-inch uh, MacBook Air. So you're gonna get kind of the upgraded CPU, the, the unbin chip. So that's another reason you wanna pick this up. Again, if you're not, going to be a power user. We're talking the base model right now, but you still get more cores with that base model. All right, two more things, all day batteries, one thing. The battery's incredible on this thing. You realistically get about 10 hours if you're doing normal stuff, maybe 15 if you're doing one specific thing, but that's really good. And then finally, it's just fast enough for, like I mentioned, all those things I mentioned before for doing just basic emails and doing web browsing, YouTube watching. If you're that kind of user, get the base model. It's perfect, I highly recommend it, and let's move on. All right, so I said it's, I recommend it, right? But now why is it so hard to recommend, all right? So it's hard to recommend if you're somebody that's not that person. If you're some person that likes to do 8K editing, 4K editing, any type of video editing, you know, Xcode uh, development, things like that, in this day and age, 256 gigs of SSD space, including the slower stuff, and eight gigs of RAM is kind of unacceptable, right? It's really unacceptable at this point, and it can't really push you know, a lot of things at once. I mean, it's something that, you know, it can do a lot, but it can only do so much, right? And what I wanted to kind of show people here, you know, if you're gonna just try to get the base model and you're somebody that's just not that simple user, you're gonna run into some problems. And don't take my word for it. Take a look at someone, you know, there's other big YouTubers saying the exact same thing. Let's take a look right now. Because once you, let's say, let's say you do wanna, you know, edit the occasional iMovie in 4K, 
right? It's doable, but it's relatively slow and you have to make sure that you only have that open. Because Absolutely the same could be said about any heavy task like photo editing, music creation, 3D, any power intensive task can cripple this Mac pretty badly. My review model, again, it's the base model, right? So it has eight gigabytes of memory, it has 256 gigabytes of storage, but if I wanted to edit something like multiple 4K streams in Final Cut Pro, having that eight gigabytes really does slow me down. Right, and they're not the only ones saying this. I mean, Max Tech said it. A lot of people showed examples of where this thing can kind of fall apart with the base model, right? But it's perfect for other simple tasks. So obviously you can upgrade this, right? You can upgrade it to 512 gigabytes. You can upgrade it to 16 gigs of RAM. And then here we start running into issues. Now, not, not in performance, right? Once you do that, the SSD gets faster, the RAM is better. And this thing's gonna, you know, it's gonna be kind of challenging almost the uh, 14 inch, M2 14 inch MacBook Pro, right? It's not gonna be exact, but they showed examples like, like again, Max Tech and everyone else, if you, you'll find them if you search for them. But they're showing one-on-one -on -one examples and the thing holds its, it's, it holds its own, right? It's one of those things where obviously you can do it, you can upgrade everything, but now you're up to 1,699 bucks, right? 1,699 bucks. And the 14 inch is basically gonna be either around 1749 on sale and that's for the M2 version, mind you. The M2 is only that expensive if you find it on sale. And then you can even get the M1 version for about 1500 bucks on Apple Refurbished right now. So you got to consider that one as well. But let's just talk about the M2, that's 1749 that $50 difference. So, I mean, obviously, again, if you're comparing the two, it's not bad performing once you upgrade it, right? But I just can't recommend it. I'm going to tell you why in a second. I cannot recommend buying it because it's, it's, it's something that you got to look at all the disadvantages that you're running into. There's a couple of reasons why you would still want to buy it, even if you upgrade it there, but I'm going to get to that at the end, so stay tuned for that. But first of all, let's talk about all the advantages of just buying the M2 MacBook 14-inch Pro over the 15-inch once you want to get to that price point. It just doesn't make a lot of sense for the power users, all right? For the other users, it totally does. It's one of the best systems for 1249. But over here, you're running into some issues, and I'm going to give you some examples here of why the 14-inch is so much better. All right. Number one, the 14 inch screen is just brighter. Let's just be honest, it has more nits of brightness, so if you're outside, it's better. It's got 120 hertz pro motion. The 15 inch only has 60 hertz, that's a big difference there, but some people don't even notice it, whatever. It's got a slightly better resolution on the 14 inch as well, and slightly smaller screen, obviously, that's the disadvantage, but slightly smaller screen, slightly higher resolution. And then I think one last thing here, it's got the, you know, the mini LEDs versus just the normal LED screen. So the screen is unarguably better, better blacks for sure, but it just depends. It's smaller, but better. All right, ports. That's something we talked about before as well, but let me just go through them really quickly. I'm going to look over here. On the 14 inch, you get a lot better ports, all right? You get the SD card slot, which is way better, obviously. You don't have to bring a dongle with you anywhere you go if you're doing video editing. Again, this is for video editors and things like that. These more power users. You also get the HDMI port, and that's a great option as well if you ever need it. Some people don't need it. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, that's the same as a 15, no advantage. You get MagSafe 3 port, not really an advantage, but then you get three Thunderbolt 4 ports, all right? So you get an extra port there as well. Now that's actually an advantage to the 14 inch as well. So you're definitely gonna be getting more ports overall. Um, and uh, I don't know if you thought about this, but really what it is pretty amazing here is you can actually then on the 14 inch, this is the, one of the big kickers, the one big difference is you you can get up to four external displays on that and on obviously the 15 inch MacBook Air you can only get one so if you're somebody that needs external displays more than one of them you don't really even have an option there now you can get a hub or something that actually I've showed them on my channel before where you can get multiple screens using a hub a certain hub using display link software the issue with that though is that's 150 bucks extra right there that you have to add on to the cost and now you're higher than the 14 inch by quite a bit so you have to consider if you're a multi-screen user usually the 14 inch on this is usually a power user, it needs to go with that unit. All right, speakers. Speakers are better. Even though the 15 inch MacBook Air have great speakers, the 14 inch MacBook Air has better speakers. A lot of YouTubers out there show you differences. I've actually done it in the past, so they're just better overall quality. Now, I don't even listen to the speakers that much. I listen to headphones a lot, so it doesn't affect me. But for other people, that's a big one. Then fans, all right? So obviously it has fans. So when you're getting into heavy workloads and things like that, people can argue that the 15 inch can hold its own, but when you're doing really, really long workloads like that, the fans can kick in. It's very specific cases, mind you, but it'll actually less, thr it'll throttle less basically on the 14 than the 15 inch. So again, if you're spending just as much, you might as well go with the fans in this case. If you're doing real work and you really need it for kind of high-end stuff, it's just better overall to have that active cooling built in. 
And then more GPU cores and CPU cores. It's just a no-brainer, right? I mean, they're both M2 chips, right? But the 14-inch, let me see, the 15-inch has 8 CPU, 10 GPU, and the 14-inch has 10 CPU, 16 GPU, and that's on the base metal of both of those. So more cores is better. They're basically the same chip. It's just you get more of them. So ultimately, you're going to, even though it's close, you're still going to have better performance overall. All right, so to wrap this up, why do I recommend it and not recommend it? Well, I recommend it for the 1249, for users that don't need all that power. They, they don't do editing. They don't do anything like that. That's perfect for them, all right? Now, I don't recommend it for power users, but let me say with a caveat, if you're a power user and the form factor is like the, the main, you know, you just love the form factor. You cannot get over the bigger screen by an inch and you can't get over the thinness of that because obviously the 14 inch is thicker, then I recommend the 15 inch upgraded, all right? But that's the only person, if, if they like, if, if the only difference is you have to have that form factor, then go with the upgraded 15 inch MacBook Air. But everybody else that needs that power, that needs to, you know, video editing and Xcode development and crunching, you know, thousands of photos because you're a photo editor, I know it's a little bit thicker and everything and you don't care that much about the form factor, you just really have to go with that 14 inch M2 MacBook Pro. I mean, in the end of it though, we're all different, right? And this is the biggest caveat with computers and all the technology coming our way so quickly, like, like it's never has in, in the past, right? Whatever you buy, it's always Murphy's Law. Something better will be tomorrow. Something faster will be, you know, it's just always gonna happen. You might think you make the wrong choice. You're always second guessing yourself. I say don't do that, all right? Buy it, be happy, use it. Because the way I look at it is this, all right? So you spend 1500 bucks. That's a ton of money, right? But I don't look at it as 1500 bucks. I look at it as I'm going to use this thing three years and I'm going to sell it for 800 in three years. So if I look at it that way, I spend 700 bucks. I compare that against other systems out there. And with Windows systems, you usually can't do that. Sometimes you can sell them, but they just don't hold the resell like some of these Macs do. So I look at it as a short term. I'm leasing it for a while and it makes me feel better, all right? And number two, Again, no matter what you buy, there's always something better. But if you think that way, you're just never going to enjoy the system that you bought. And it's just an overall bad experience. I'm just telling you, if you're somebody that's a, just a normal user, go with the 15-inch base model. It's perfect. Nice screen. If you have to upgrade it and the form factor is super important to you, stay with it, the 15-inch. But if everybody else get the 14-inch and I'm sticking to it, again, it's my opinion. It doesn't mean I'm right. But I, you can't tell me my opinion's wrong because that's, I'm not changing it. So anyways, I hope you guys like these videos and I will talk to everybody soon. Uh, you know my sign-off. I think some really famous YouTubers stole it from me. We'll talk to you in a bit. Peace.